Um, as you all, some, some of y'all know, we have uh, three foster kids. They slowly multiplied over time. Um, so uh, we went to Texas to um, go visit my family that's down by the border. And um, the night before, uh, the night before, we got a call from my neighbor. Of course, she didn't want to tell me, she called me. And she said, where's Chris? And I said, is everything okay? And um, uh, she said, just keep put Chris on the phone. And she knew I wasn't going to be able to handle it. <laughs> so she put Christopher on the phone. And praise God for uh, a godly husband who relies solely on Jesus all the time. Because he just nodded his head and said, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. And uh, Rascal's okay. So our dog, our, our dog is Rascal. And uh, they managed to get him out of the fire. So, uh, so what had happened was um, the police officer was finishing his patrol and he happened to be driving by our house. And as he drove by our house, um, he saw smoke billing out of the new addition that was being built. And he was just at the right place at the right time. But he also happened to be on the phone with his partner who he was telling he was coming back to the station. So as he was on the phone, he told his partner, I think this house is on fire. And he called the police department as the other police officer checked to see if there was anyone in our home. Um, and it was just the dog. He, he was probably frantic and calling for help to begin with. Um, so they managed to get Rascal out and they managed to call the fire department. But because of their quick actions and the quick God's providence, it was God's providence. Um, they were able to uh, put out the fire as quickly as possible, as much as they could, but our house is still a total loss. Um, so, uh, yeah, God is good, but in the time of trouble, you have the peace of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, but you just, this uncertainty is still kind of it comes for you. You know, the, the enemy tries to put doubt in your heart that you're not gonna make it through this. You don't know what to do. There's, there's, there's no hope, but there's always hope. Hallelujah. So we got home and we saw our house. It's a total loss. Uh, we were told by the vet that they got rascal in time um, because he would have been much worse off and there would have been clear signs of a dog inhaling smoke. So, God's timing was in it all, and we saw that. But my heart started to become hard and bitter because I'm a, and I just told my husband this yesterday, my, my gift, I know what my, my office is. I'm a servant, I, I serve people. The Bible says that there's no greater, there's no religion greater than um, uh, tending to the widows and orphans. And I always made that part of my mental thought to serve widows and orphans. But I felt like I served and served and served and gave so much of myself. Be all things for all people, right? But um, <clears throat> that I started to become bitter. So where were the people for me? The Lord said to me, Am I not enough? Thank you, Lord. He's always been enough. And when back in the past, when, when my family and I we were homeless, he was enough. When I felt like I was drowning, he was still enough. I just didn't see it. And then when he asked me, Am I not enough? It just took me back there. Lord, you're enough. Yes. Yeah. He's more than enough. He's provided us so much since then. Um, I had to leave my job because, you know, we got the kids and things got hard at work. And um, they were going to fire this little girl who needed her job. And and I was dealing with it. And I wanted to be a submissive wife. You know, my dad, my husband, my dad, oh my gosh. My husband <laughs> wanted me to keep my job because we loved our lifestyle. 
we love being able to have freedom with our finances. And um, yes, we have two kids now that we provide for because the state doesn't really give you much to uh, compensate you for taking in foster children. Um, but but we were making it, and we were providing this life for these kids, and we, we didn't know that the Lord, and even when we got married, we didn't know that the Lord wanted us to do that. Um, so, the Lord told me, it's going to be time, and then he showed me through other people, it's going to be time. See, I made my life on success. I wanted to be a successful person. Oh Lord, the, 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 I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a filmmaker, I wanted to be a banker, I wanted to be successful and make money and generate money and, and retire a millionaire. Everybody wants that life because, of, because the world tells us that we need to have that life. Yeah. Here's how you retire as a millionaire. Right. Come on. So I went to school two times. I got a graphic design degree and I got a business degree. And I didn't use either than moving here. Because at the beginning, when I first married my husband, I said, Lord, what do I have to do to serve you? And he said, he said, if you didn't have, if I didn't give you all the things that you asked for, would you still serve me? And the answer was a quick, of course. Come on. I didn't know it was waiting on the other side of that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I was gonna move to South Louisiana much smaller than the valley and very much more obscure than, than the valley. You see, where I live, it's 77,000 people population, and that's small compared to statistics. Over here, where I live, it's like 7,000 people. So, um, so I said, Lord, I will submit to my husband, but I know that this is the right thing to do, so I'm just going to wait on the Lord to move my husband's heart. So things got tough at work. We have this fire going on, and the enemy is pressing and pressing and pressing on my emotions, on my mindset, on my ego, on my ambitions, on my spiritual life, on our family life. He is pressing and pressing and pressing. But what I didn't realize was that God was allowing that pressing. Come on. Yeah. Because how do you get oil? Yeah. You go through pressing. So... Finally, we got in. I came home and I had my complaints about work. I said, man, you wouldn't believe what they're doing, this, that, and the other. And he said, you know what? You know what? You don't need that job. Make whatever decision that you feel like the Lord is leading you, take it. So I took it. Took my opportunity to get my little mouth self right through that hole. That hole was not, it was just this big and I fit right through it. I told my boss, I'm going to leave. I'm going to make room for the other girl to keep her job. And then um, maybe just take a hiatus and come back. So uh, the tension did not relieve between me and my husband because our finances were short. But this is how God works. God sent someone to teach Christopher how to make sales at work. And it increased his pay threefold, Praise fourfold, fivefold. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So, God doesn't honor you read in your Bible every day. He honors submission. God doesn't honor you singing out praises to the Lord in your living room. He honors submission. God doesn't honor your fellowship with other people. He honors submission, no matter what and whatever the cost is. Yes. So my submission to my husband had to be withstanding. And when he gave me that opportunity, the Lord was like, take it. Yes. So I took it. And... He honored us in that way. But you see, my heart was still bitter because I serve and I serve and I give so much of myself. <clears throat> but the Lord reminded me, you have to give so much of yourself because none of yourself can stay. Yeah. You have to give and give and give because there cannot be any more of you left Come in on. you right. for him to move in your life supernaturally. So I may have been hurt by this person and that person and another person. I'm walking around with bitterness in my heart and God is not moving in me. He's moving in my life, our lives, because we are one spirit, me and my husband. So my, God is honoring my submission to him and my submission to my husband, but I'm not seeing the fruit in my own life. 
And that can come in many different forms. You may sit and stir in your bitterness all day long. And now I'm a housewife with two kids, and we got another one who can't fend for himself. <laughs> and three kids. And here I am with frustration in my heart and frustration in my life and frustration in my bones because I'm 40 and I'm raising two under two and a nine-year-old who didn't know how to, to, to function in a civilized world. So I'm basically teaching all these kids how to function, and I need the grace of God, but the grace of God is not moving in me because I have bitterness on my heart. Bitterness will overtake you. It's a poison, and it's a slow poison. And it's a slow poison that enemy administers to your food and to your air and to everything that you touch because you know, because Poison is not just administered orally and through the air. You can touch a poison and it affects you, just like a frog. You can go and touch a frog, one of those poisonous frogs, it will affect you. So if you're walking around in bitterness in your heart towards any person, and I never thought I'd have bitterness in my heart towards the body of Christ, never, no, that's a lie. I just lied in the pulpit. I did have bitterness because I've experienced church hurt before. Or church has turned their back on you, or you feel like the church has turned their back on you. But I didn't blame the Lord, I blamed the church, I blamed the people. But God has commanded us to love people, yes. no matter what. Because it is people that we minister to. It's not dogs and cats and birds. We don't worship water. We don't worship the air. We don't worship the sun. We're not bringing gratitudes and platitudes to objects and animals. We are bringing our gratitude and praise to the Lord. And when you have bitterness in your heart, your praise and your worship is tainted. Come on. That's strange fire. I was offering strange fire. And I didn't even know it. You may sit here and have church hurt, but I was hurt, hurt, crying hurt, not wanting to come to church hurt, not wanting to be around my family hurt. We're relying on people who are not even walking in sanctification to give me uh, some sort of encouragement because they weren't the church, they weren't the people that hurt me. And here I am again with my church hurt. The Bible says, the Lord in the midst of you is mighty and a warrior bringing victory. And he will create calm with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. But if you're not coming to the Lord with a pure heart and pure worship and glorifying him in purity, if you're putting on the garments of praise, if you're putting on the armor of the Lord, and you're saying, I'm putting the armor on every day, but what are you putting your armor on? There are mummies in Egypt wearing armor, and they're dead, and they're cursed. There, there are people out there wearing brand new clothes, but they're walking around with steak. You see, when we become saved, the Holy Spirit touches our hearts and our lives. All of a sudden, the colors are brighter, the smells are greater, the food tastes better. Tell me I'm wrong. The trees were greener for me. I love trees. And the wind was so perfect and beautiful one day when I was walking down the hall in elementary school. It was wonderful. See, that's what God does. He makes everything sweeter in your life. But if you're walking around with bitterness in your heart, those taste buds that taste the sweetness of the Lord are not effective. And you can't have the testimony of the Lord constantly in your life. See, God wants to have a testimony in your, your life every single day. But the bitterness in my heart was overtaking me. And I asked the Lord to help. Help me, Lord. Help me get over this. And he did. He did over time. And hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like our God. Yes. There is no one like our God. I'm saying that as a matter of fact. You're walking around thinking that, they, that the Lord and Jesus are some sort of tale as old as time. Yeah, he's eternal, but he's eternal in you. 
You have to tap into that internal God and stop being bitter towards people because it's people that are the body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.